Hey everyone, it's Joy the Joyful Life, and today we have a special blessing. We're at the Texas Boys Homestead, and we want y'all to meet the Texas Boys too. So here we go. Yeah. Right now, I'm with my favorite little people. What's up, y'all? My name is Goober. My name is Rufus. So what animals do you have on your homestead? We have pigs, chickens, rabbits, a Jersey cow, dogs, ducks. Okay, so what breed are your pigs? So our pigs breeds are Cooney Cooney <laughs> pigs and um, yeah, and we got them just a couple months ago and hopefully we will get some litters of piglets off them so then we can have some bacon. Over here is where they keep their chickens, and how many chickens do you have? We have, in all, we have right around 30 chickens right now, yeah. Okay, yeah. what breed are they? We got mainly Rhode Island Reds with a couple other mixed breeds in there. Uh, we got a Silky mixed breed with, uh, then we got some Jersey Giants, those are the big black ones. Yep, that's pretty much it for the chicken breeds that we have. Okay, and about how many eggs? We get average right around maybe eight to a dozen eggs a day, right around there. Okay, and over here you have some ducks? Yep, we got, we have 10 fawn and white Indian runner ducks, and then we have nine, and then we have nine other ducks, and they are Golden 300s, and then black Indian runner. We got three black Indian runners. And then, and then we have our Muscovy ducks here. Okay, do they lay good eggs? Yes, they lay like crazy. But we got, we got, and they're crazy good mamas. Two, we got two, one broody duck over there and another broody duck over here. And they probably have at least 16 eggs under that one and about a dozen underneath that one, too. And over here, they have a milking cow. And what breed is she? She's a Jersey cow and we got her tested and she's actually an A2A2B, so the B stands for, she has a really high butter, she has a really high cream content. About how much milk do you get? We get about a gallon and a half every day, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes two gallons. But we're averaging around one and a half to two gallons a day. And where do you usually milk her? Well, we, we've been milking her, we'll show you up front, but we've been milking her over there by the big cedar tree. But in the winter time, it's just a little too cold with the breeze and everything. So we'll bring her in to this hoop house over here that we made. And we have it all set up in there. A little bit nicer than up front there, but you know, it's there's actually a little bit more of a breeze up there than back here in the summertime, so. I'm guessing there used to be rabbits here, but why yeah. did you move them? Yeah, so we moved them. We have them on a semi-permanent, we put them we put them up on a pallet for when it's springtime and spring and summertime because the worm load is so high. Um, we used to have them out all year long and they would die like crazy. So we learned that what we do is we put them up on pallets, the rabbit tractors that are out there right now, and we raise them up off the ground so they're not really exposed to any type of worms. Uh, they're not exposed to the damp ground that the spring and the summer have, but then we've we've um, But in the fall time it seems like the worm load drops a lot So that's why we move them out on pasture in the fall and the winter time and then in the spring we raise them back off the ground So what's this bucket in their cage for well, this is the roof is just as uh, Rufus just designed this but this um we used this used to be the old the old five gallon bucket that we used with the semi-permanent system back over there that we were talking about but um now Rufus um designed it customly designed it so it has an elbow a couple arrow elbows and we're using the same design with the chicken nipples here we got an end cap here and we screwed it to the tractor so then this will last them like four or five days instead of coming out here every single day and watering them. And we can give them apple cider vinegar if if the worm load starts to get a little bit too high and we start to see them get a little bit skinnier. So we'll, we can splash apple cider vinegar in here instead of splashing 
apple cider vinegar and individual um, water containers. Over here they have some fruit trees and what kind of fruit trees do you have? We have fig trees, pear trees, lots more fig trees. We got, well, we got a couple berries. We got blueberries. Back here we got other types up front, but then we got some apple trees, some peach trees, and we got all types of other stuff way back there. And um, we got some mulberry trees. That's pretty much it. Oh yeah, and some elderberries. If you want to really call them for a tree but yeah they're kind of sort of like a bush have you gotten any fruit from them yet yeah we got a lot we got quite a bit of fruit from the fig tree this one fig tree and then we got a lot of fruit off that tree a good a uh, good 27 pears off that one tree a couple off that one but all the other apples and stuff we didn't get this year anything off them but then we got one peach right. off that peach tree over there this year but you know it was its first time fruiting so it wasn't it wasn't good now it's time to have some fun Video. We had a really fun and blessed day here on the Texas Boys Homestead and we give them a huge thank you for showing y'all their homestead. Have a blessed day y'all and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye!